Hey guys, so Sakurai does these bi-weekly columns for the Japanese gaming magazine Famitsu, and the latest one has to do with Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, specifically the second Fighter's Pass, and it's actually leaked a little bit early and has been translated by Push Dustin of Source Gaming. There's some interesting news in this leaked Famitsu column, and I definitely want to go over it, but first let's talk about the big news we just had the other day. We are in fact getting a Direct this week, an Animal Crossing Direct. On February 20th, 2020, there will be an Animal Crossing New Horizons Direct. This is at 6 a.m. Pacific Time or 9 a.m. Eastern Time. Tune in for roughly 25 minutes live-streamed Animal Crossing New Horizons Direct, featuring an in-depth look at Nook Inc.'s Deserted Island Getaway Package. Lately, Nintendo fans have been starved for any kind of Nintendo news. Now, this is, of course, a Animal Crossing Direct and not a Nintendo General Direct, but still, fans have been waiting for a Direct for a very long time, so people are pretty happy about this one. Also, the leaker Zippo did, in fact, call this one. So Zippo wrote, All right, then, might as well let it out. There's two Directs this month. You've already guessed what they obviously are. Not sure of the timing, but that February 20th stuff lines up for Animal Crossing. Please don't flood me. And then, of course, we have Tune In on February 20th for the Animal Crossing Direct. Last week, Pixelpar wrote, God, I hope there's a Direct next week. And Emily Rogers responded, Are you an Animal Crossing fan? And, of course, we have now gotten that Animal Crossing Direct. So they were dead on with this one. So with Zippo saying we'd get two Directs this month, and we already have the Animal Crossing Direct on the 20th, just like Zippo predicted, it's possible we could get a General Direct next week. Some people were getting worried that we wouldn't get any kind of general Nintendo Direct until like E3 or something, but hopefully Zippo's right and we will be getting two Directs this month. Even if they're wrong about that, they were dead on accurate with the date and everything for the Animal Crossing Direct, so I do think Zippo has very real information, even if that other Direct doesn't happen. It probably was just off for some reason, because they were totally right about the Animal Crossing Direct. Zippo also wrote, no, I stand by everything. My sources were confident in all that they told me, and I stick by them 100%. This was after people were doubting whether or not we would actually get two directs this month. So yeah, Zippo is still confident in their sources, so hopefully they're right, and there will be two directs. Personally, I'm not totally sure when we might get a general Nintendo Direct, but hey, if Zippo continues to be right and we get another one before the end of February here, I'd be very happy about it. So one very interesting thing about this Animal Crossing Direct happened over on Twitter. On the Nintendo America Twitter page, when they posted the Animal Crossing Direct, at Doom wrote back, Will Isabel be there? Both Animal Crossing, New Horizons, and Doom Eternal share the same release date of March 20th, so there's been a bit of an internet joke between Doom Guy and Isabel hanging out. It's pretty neat to see the official Doom Twitter page acknowledging this. Now to get a bit Smash conspiracy theory with all this, Isabel is our latest newcomer from the Animal Crossing series to get into Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, and the Doom Twitter page here is specifically talking about Isabel, so could this be some sort of link to Super Smash Bros.? A lot of people really want Doom Guy for Smash and have been speculating on it for a while now. However, somewhat recently, there was a pretty big hit to Doom Guy's chances of getting into Smash when an interview with Marty Stratton, an id Software executive producer, basically said that they had never been approached by Nintendo to put Doom Guy in Smash. This could, of course, just been deflection, though the interview itself was pretty in-depth. Usually when people are deflecting because of, like, a non-disclosure agreement, they kind of are short about it or kind of make a joke about it. This was pretty in-depth. But we have had something similar happen before. For instance, Grant Kirkhope, who knew that Banjo was coming to Smash, uh, said, don't hold your breath for Banjo at E3. And then, of course, we did get Banjo at E3, and Grant knew that the whole time. So it's possible Marty was just deflecting here. Personally, I'm not totally counting out Doom Guy yet for Smash, but this was a pretty big hit against him. With that said, as a fan of Doom, Animal Crossing, and Doom Guy getting into Super Smash Bros., it's nice to see some minor evidence here that could possibly be pointing towards that all happening. Before we move on from the subject of Nintendo Directs, Stealth over on Twitter wrote, Lack of direct announcement aside, PAX East starts next week, and Nintendo has the biggest booth at the show. I'm more curious why Nintendo hasn't announced their lineup yet. That is pretty interesting that Nintendo is holding off on that, but we did just get some very sad news from PlayStation about their presence at PAX East. PlayStation pulls out of PAX East because of coronavirus concerns. Today, Sony Interactive Entertainment made the decision to cancel its participation at PAX East in Boston this year due to increasing concerns related to the coronavirus. We felt this was the safest option as the situation is changing daily. We are disappointed to cancel our participation in this event, but the health and safety of our global workforce is our highest concern. 
Okay, so now let's talk about that Famitsu column that Sakurai wrote regarding the second Fighter's Pass. This is being translated by Push Dustin. Push Dustin is an excellent source for all sorts of things, so I definitely suggest following him over on Twitter and checking out Source Gaming over on YouTube. I'll leave links to both of those in the description below. Over on Twitter, at Push Dustin wrote, Famitsu column for Sakurai has leaked. Here are some takeaways. Six additional fighters are being made for Smash Ultimate. After that, there are no other plans, so Smash Ultimate is almost finished. Push Dustin goes on to write, Nintendo decided the characters for the DLC, Sakurai did not. So that's some pretty major news here. These next six fighters in the second Fighters Pass will be the end of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. There won't be additional fighters, or at least there's no plans to do so right now. During the first Fighters Pass, there supposedly weren't any plans to do a second one, and then they changed their minds. So maybe at some point they could add a third Fighters Pass, like if sales are really good or Nintendo wants to do that. But as of right now, these next six might be our final characters for Smash Ultimate and the end of the DLC for the game. Also, once again, just like with the first Fighters Pass, supposedly Nintendo has chosen the characters. Most likely it's probably working the same way, where Nintendo chooses the characters, and then Sakurai gives the okay of whether or not they can make a moveset for that character and add them into Smash. But it does seem Nintendo is choosing the DLC all the way through here. If I had to speculate on this new information, I would say this second Fighters Pass probably is going to look a lot like our first Fighters Pass. Given that Nintendo also chose the DLC for the first Fighters Pass, this one's going to be the same way. So big fan favorite characters such as Banjo are possible. We got that in the first Fighters Pass. However, that's probably not going to be the entire Fighters Pass. Something like Byleth to promote a um, Nintendo game is probably also going to happen in this Fighters Pass. And then of course other companies maybe Nintendo wants to boost relations with might also get characters in this pass. It's probably going to look a lot like what we've already gotten. Push Dustin continued to write, while working on Smash Ultimate, Sakurai can't work on anything else. It's coming to a point where Sakurai won't be able to direct any new game idea. But Sakurai is okay with that. Sakurai wants to keep working to make other people happy. Sakurai and Nintendo are not planning any future entries in the Smash series right now, so he doesn't know what will happen. Adding content to this game, little by little, extends Smash Ultimate's life. So Sakurai plans to give his all for the last six fighters. And that makes sense. Sakurai, of course, is a game designer. He wants to develop new games. He can't just work on Smash forever, and doing the Smash DLC ties him down. But he's cool with that because he does want Smash Ultimate to be really great, and he's going to give us his all on these last six fighters, so that's some good news. Here are some additional quotes from the leaked excerpt of Sakurai's upcoming column. I can't say for sure if the Smash series will continue. The people at Nintendo who are in charge of the series and I are not thinking about the future at all. It's not really good for the long-term future of the series to just add new content to Ultimate, but by putting out a little bit at a time, we can make Ultimate last longer. So because of all that, these six fighters are really extra additions. So as of right now, Sakurai and Nintendo have no plans for any future Super Smash Bros. games, and also no future DLC after these six fighters. Sakurai is just focused on making these six fighters the best that he possibly can, and that's probably a good thing. Sakurai seems to really care about the fans and giving us exactly what we want, so hopefully by the end of this, everyone will be pretty satisfied with Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Push Dustin gave his personal take on this and said, My personal take on Smash DLC. Sakurai said there are no other plans for DLC, and this means it's likely that the six fighters in Fighter Pass two are the last. However, there's always the possibility they add more. It's just that they aren't planning on adding more right now. Personally, I'd rather let Sakurai rest, but if there's more content, of course I'd be happy. And I totally agree with that. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate was basically complete when they simply brought everyone back and had everyone is here. That right there was like the perfect version of Super Smash Bros. 4 that I just would have been happy to get ported over to the Switch. But then we continue to get new characters, new updates. It's just been amazing the amount of DLC we've gotten so far and the DLC we're about to get. Six more fighters. I couldn't ask for any more. This is a pretty amazing game, pretty um, unheard of amount of characters in a roster for Smash. I don't think I'd ever guess that this would have been a reality. So yeah, if we just get this second Fighters Pass and that's the end of it, it's a pretty good amount that we got here, guys. I think we can all be pretty satisfied with it. Now, this new information does discredit one leak. That leak was the 5chan leak that was saying Ryu Hayabusa got moved to Fighter Pass 2 and replaced with Byleth. That leak was claiming that Fighter Pass 3 had already been decided, but according to Sakurai and Nintendo here, there is no plans for Fighter Pass 3 as of this time. 
I still think Ryu Hayabusa is a very likely character to get into Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Honestly, it might be like one of the most likely characters. It's a character that just keeps popping up on people's leaks because they just seem like such a perfect character to add. It would add in Koei Tecmo, who's already kind of a part of Smash, and give them a playable character. And he's like an original, um, you know, Nintendo Entertainment System, old school 80s character for Nintendo. It just feels like he'd fit really well um, into Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, and there keeps popping up leaks with him, and then they keep getting shot down. So I still have hope for Hayabusa, but yeah, it's kind of weird that he just keeps popping up and then getting uh, brushed aside or the leak just falls apart. So hopefully by the end of this, Hayabusa does get in. Another thing that happened recently is Mandy Can, the supposed leaker who said that Byleth would be the fifth DLC fighter and said Crash would be number six, may have just gotten found out to have definitely done that Twitter trick. The Twitter trick is essentially posting a ton of predictions and then deleting the wrong ones, only leaving the correct ones, making it look like you predicted things. Over on my Discord, Max reached out to Mandy Can to get a look at their Twitter account. Max used a website that can collect Twitter analytics and said, yeah, it means he at least tweeted one other thing, most likely a lot more. His top tweet in October, at the end of October, was his tweet mentioning Virgibent. That tweet had eight impressions. That means the most impressions his other four tweets could have had are eight. Four times eight equals 32, meaning the maximum amount of impressions he could have had that month are 32 unless he deleted tweets. And the number of impressions that are showing up for October on Mandy Can's account? 562, which is of course much more than 32, which should have been the maximum amount. Also, Sabi is taking a bit of a break. They tweeted this, Within an hour, I'll be deactivating this account for a bit. I don't intend to keep leaking Nintendo stuff for a plethora of reasons. I will continue with normal journalism, etc. Sorry for any inconveniences. So Sabi has decided to take a bit of a break. We also got a 90s event for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, and I am a huge fan of the 90s, specifically 90s gaming. I'm all about that. That was like my whole childhood. So this event really speaks to me. It's pretty cool. Over on Twitter, at NoThanks2017 wrote, Hey Papaginos, been meaning to share this with you for a while. Looks like Totaku is producing their own Shantae figure. Along with Funko Pop, worth noting since Totaku also released that Banjo-Kazooie figure just a little over half a year before their Smash reveal. And yeah, Shantae is getting some new merchandise. They're getting a Totaku figure, they're getting a Funko Pop figure, and this is fairly similar to what was going on with Banjo-Kazooie in the lead up to them getting into Smash. They got a Totaku figure, they got that um, Cable Guy figure, so this could be pointing to good things for the future of Shantae. It's possible, perhaps, that the Shantae spirit will be upgraded to a full-fledged playable character in the second Fighter's Pass. We'll have to wait and see. All right, guys, well, that's everything I wanted to talk about in this video. If you guys have any thoughts or comments about any of the stuff I talked about, leave them below. So once again, thank you guys for all the subscribes, all the likes, uh, it really helps out the channel. So if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and do so, or like the video, or leave a comment, whatever you want. Uh, until next time, have a good one.